Hallelujah. Come on, stand up in the atmosphere this morning. Ah. If you're on social media, feel free to go ahead and share the service. Share it on the Emmanuel Christian Center page. Share it to your friends and your family and your loved ones. Hallelujah. But I'm just glad to be in the house of God. How many are glad to be here today? Come on, how many are glad to be here today? Shout hallelujah. Ah, I want the presence of God to enter into the atmosphere. This song is called Emmanuel, God with us, amen. How many know that God is with you in your life? How many know is God is with you in your circumstance? How many know I believe God is going to turn something around this morning? Somebody was going through a situation, a circumstance, and I believe in the presence of the turnaround. That somebody's life is going to turn around in a drop of a dime. That in the midst of a situation, it's going to just change and work out on our behalf. Work out for our good. Work out because God is doing something in behind the scenes. God is doing something for us. Amen. I believe in the turnaround this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I know I'm supposed to sing. I feel the presence of God where I just want to preach. But I, I know I'm supposed to sing. So uh, let's go to the top. Right here, lift your voice. Sing, come. Come, let us. Sing, come, come, let us, come, let us adore you. Kneel down, kneel down before you. Worship and worship and adore you. Come on, lift your voice, say, Emmanuel. Bless your name, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. We give you praise, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. We worship. We worship you. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Back to the top. Sing, come, come, let us, come, let us adore you. Kneel down, kneel down before you. Worship and worship and adore you. Sing it again, sing, come, come, let us. Come on, push your praise, shout Emmanuel. We thank you, God, Emmanuel. We bless your name, Emmanuel. We give you praise, Emmanuel. You, Lord. We worship you. Last one we worship. We worship you. Come on, put your hands together like this.
right here. Send up Judah. Send up Judah. Uh, send up Judah. 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 Uh, for everything.
Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We are so excited to have you. This is a great day to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is an awesome God and a marvelous Savior. So we bless his name today. Isn't he good? I see you're in agreement with me. Well, thank you for joining us today. We pray if you're joining us by live stream or on Zoom, just hit that share button. We're going to share the gospel. We're going to win souls for the kingdom of God. So just hit share so that we can reach the lost with the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for being with us today. We're going to start with Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. If you need anything from God today, just lift your hand. He is present. He is able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your healing power. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to have your way in our service today. We ask you to heal. We ask you to deliver. We ask you to set free the captive in the name of Jesus we give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory in Jesus name we pray amen and amen welcome our pastor pastor Alvin Simpkins well what a great day it is to be in the house of the Lord how many of you know the Lord's really been good to you kept you alive then stretch your elbow all the way up and let's just tell him thank you oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good his mercy is everlasting. His truth endure to all generations. Father, we come to say thank you for all of your help. You brought us. You are bringing us through. You are a good God, bigger than any problem that we might have. You are God all by yourself. So today we come to praise you. We come to worship you. We come to magnify your name. You're worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' name, as we lift our hands in the sanctuary, hold our hands lest we fall in jesus name i pray somebody say amen will you give the lord a hand clap for his goodness and all of his mercy would you welcome elder william harris as he pray a blessing over all of our children god is a good god praise you for your goodness and your mercy we thank you lord because we call in good things for each and every one of our children lord we ask that they will walk in the authority that you have given them as children, that they will walk in success, oh God. We bind the hand of the enemy that will steal, kill, and destroy our children. Father, we pray, Lord God, that they will fulfill their purpose in life. You have a destiny in store for each and every one of our children. Oh God, there are geniuses that are going somewhere in their life. You are taking them places that they've never been before. Lord, we declare success over their life. We renounce the curse of failure over our children. They will succeed in life. They will prosper in life. No weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. And we declare and we say thank you in advance for each and every one of our children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good at this time. Would you give the Lord a hand clap as we release all of our children to go to their children's church, uh, their youth service. Come on, clap your hands. Thank the Lord for them and helping all the ministers that's going to be working with them. We so appreciate you. God is a good God. Somebody say amen. Let's pray the blessing one more time. Everybody stretch your elbow up and say it with me. Say, Lord, we pronounce the blessing over our children. They are Bless. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, we pronounce the blessing over our children. They are blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Give the Lord a hand clap as Minister Jordan lead us in, a, in worship. sold out to the Lord this morning shout hallelujah oh y'all not ready come on shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, it's an old song put your hands together 
right here. Say, I'm sold out. I am sold out. And my mind is. separate us from the love. Who can separate us from the love of Jesus? Not death, no life. Not death, no life. Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price. Now we are forgiven. I am sold out. And my mind is, my mind is made up. Sing it again, I'm sold out now. I am sold out. And my mind I come through the fire, I come through the rain. I come through the fire, I come through the rain. But God, but God, He never left my side. He's my comfort. He's my comfort. He's my comfort. I am sold out. Stay right there and say, I'm sold out. I am sold out. Come on, I'm sold out. I am sold out. Say it again, I'm sold.
That's the reason. Raise your hands with me. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. Take your Bible this morning. God is a good God. Thank you for being online, live, live, online live. We are so glad that you are tuned in with us. God is a good God. Take your Bible and go with me to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse number 1 through 3. God is a good God. He loves you. Don't get mad at the Lord. Just keep serving the Lord. He loves you. He sent his son to die for you on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. Somebody say, I am blessed. Oh, say it again. I am blessed. You are blessed. The Lord is on your side. The Lord's been dealing with me about his power in the life of the believer. So just be patient as we walk through the process. Somebody say amen. Just be patient. I'm going to be preaching on it for a few days. So just be patient because there's nothing more important in your life than having God's power having God's blessing, having God's anointing in your life. Please read and make this verse personal. I want to ask my wife if she'll read verses 1 uh, and 2 and verse number 3. Isaiah 61, please read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Stop right there. Make that personal to you. Everybody raise your hand and say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, come on, help me out. Everybody say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Please read. Because the Lord hath anointed me uh -huh. to preach good tidings unto the meek. Yes. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Yes. To proclaim liberty to the captives uh -huh. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Yes. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. And the day of vengeance of our God. Yes. To comfort all that mourn. Yes. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, yes. the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, yes. the, the planting of, of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Raise your hands and let's pray. Everybody, everybody, stretch your elbow up. Father, we reach up to you this morning. You are our help. There's no place else to go. So we come boldly to your throne. We are not ashamed to say we need your help. Somebody just holler, help! We need your help. Anoint us and help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Bless you this morning. My message is protecting the anointing that's upon your life. There's something special about you. There's something that God has placed upon your life. Don't take it lightly. Don't blow it off. Don't just think that things are just the way they are. No, you are God's child and you are anointed. And the devil does not like that. Somebody say amen. The Lord has anointed your life. Just listen to the pastor this morning. The Lord has got something special on you. Somebody say amen. And if you receive it, just say, I receive it. The Lord has got something special on you. He says in Psalms 90 and verse, uh, 92 and verse 10, 92 and verse 10, you shall be anointed with fresh oil and that the power of God will manifest in your life. How Acts 10 30 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him somebody say the Lord is on my side oh say it with me the Lord is on my side open your life to the God's power Open your life to God's supernatural help. Somebody just say, help. help. We must learn and relearn about God's Holy Spirit and how it works in our lives. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, and all day, Saturday and Sunday. It's God's power at work in the life of the believer. So we must bless the Lord at all times. And let the praise be continually in your mouth. God anoints his people to accomplish great things in the earth realm. He gives them special gifts. Somebody say amen. 
So you must develop your gifts and develop your character and develop your integrity so that you can go far because God wants to take you further than where you are. He want to empower you so you can build your business. So you can make a mark that cannot be erased. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Come on, help me say, I'm anointed. When you know that God has anointed your life, you don't take it lightly and you protect the anointing that's upon your life. We, we all need more of God's power. We all need more of God's spirit in our lives. The power of God moves the gospel forward. The power of God moves your life forward. The power of God draws us closer. Somebody say closer. The anointing is God's special gift to his people. It's more than a chill that runs down your back. It's more than a hook and a move inside. It is a power that works in your life every day, and you must protect it. It works in your marriage. It works in your children's lives. It works on your job. Wherever you are, God's power is at work. If you protect it, if you respect it, and if you stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Daily, we must carry this anointing and protect it with our lives. So you can't do everything that your friends do. You can't go every place that your, your homies go. You got something special upon your life. Am I talking to anybody in the house of the Lord? Am I talking to anybody on live stream today? There is something unique about you. That's why you have lasted. That's why you are still standing. That's why your children are blessed. That's why you are still on your job. That's why they laid a lot of people off, but you are still there. Am I talking to anybody in the house this morning? That's why you are still there. And even if they let you go, God has a plan for your life. Somebody say, I am anointed. The anointing makes the difference in the life of the believer. It is the power that drives your life forward. And daily we must stir it up. Daily we must ask the Lord to teach me how to manage what's upon your life. Moses would have never moved the children of Israel out of Egypt if he didn't have God's power. Dr. Martin Luther King would have never changed the laws in America in race if he didn't have God's power. Somebody say amen. You would not be on your job if you didn't have God's power. Somebody say amen. amen. You have to know there's something special about you. Somebody say, I'm special. And see, a lot of times when people say that about you, then, you know, you, 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 you cur up and you don't receive it. But let me tell you, you got to receive it. Somebody say amen. amen. I was in Dallas this week. This weekend, yesterday, and I went to the Promise Keepers event, 30,000 men plus. And I walked in and saw my old boss, some of my old friends. And they said, Alvin Simpkins, I watch you on TV all the time. You are special. I said, I know I am. <laughs> the Lord is on my side. See, some people say, well, I don't want to be prideful. You just got to know that the Lord, you got God's anointing, God's power, God's help, God's spirit upon your life. You are anointed. Somebody say, I am, I am anointed by God's power. You would not be here if it wasn't God's power in your life. You would not have bought your house if it wasn't God's spirit upon your life. So you have to know you got to protect it. You got to respect it. You got to honor it. And you got to make sure that you do all you can to keep the fire's burning. Somebody say amen. It's the unction to function. It is God's power in our lives. It is God's energy. That's why you at home need to get back in church. That's why you at home need to get. There's an energy in the house. There's a feeling in the house. There's an anointing in the house. God said, build me a sanctuary that I might dwell among you. The Lord is present. The Lord is in the house. The Lord is with us. We are blessed. Somebody say, I am 
bless. Oh! The anointing takes the struggle out of the tough jobs in life. The anointing in God's people doesn't know a whole lot about the anointing. But the Lord put it on my heart. I'm going to be teaching our church about God's power. When you open your mouth to tell somebody about the Lord, his power is going to go to work. Somebody say amen. amen. It makes things easy. And it takes the hard work out of your marriage. If you'll just say, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, I need your help. <laughs> Trying to build that business. Don't do it by yourself. Ask God for his power. Trying to build that business. Don't do it by yourself. Ask God for his help. Somebody just shout, help. help. Trying to raise that family. Don't do it by yourself. Ask God for his power. And then you got to protect it. Once it comes into your life, you got to protect it. It makes life easier. Somebody say easier. Things don't always have to be so difficult. But if you have God's anointing, and if you have God's power, then God will bless you, and God will help you. We must call in and receive all of God's power in our lives. We must know and we must declare that I am anointed and the Lord is on my side. Don't be, don't, 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 don't be too humble. You know, when people point you out and say, oh, you are so good at what you do. Then just say, God's anointing is upon my life. Somebody say amen. amen. One of the guys at Promise Keepers said, Alvin, you make it look easy. I said, well, you don't know the prayer, and you don't know that God's helped me, and you don't know God's anointed me. I do what I do because I'm called to do it. I do what I do because I'm anointed to do it. I'm still here. Many churches are gone, but I am still. Somebody help me say, I am still here. We must call in the anointing of God. Ask God for his power going forward. And the older you get, the more you have to rely on God's power. You can't lift weights like you used to. You can't run as fast as you used to. You can't do everything that you used to do. So you have to ask God for help. Somebody say, help! You can't hit the golf ball as far as you used to hit it. So now you learn how to hit it in the fairway. Call your fairway Billy. Somebody say amen. Everybody else are over there in the snake pit. Everybody else are over there in the woods. And you are right down the fairway. Because God's helping you. Somebody say help. Tell, somebody say I am. Anointed. I want to talk to some people that understand God has something special on your life. I want to talk to some people that understand that you are not here by accident. I want to talk to some people that understand if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it. I am anointed. Somebody say, I am anointed. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, Amen. God's anointing is precious. God's anointing is valuable. God's anointing is unique. It is heaven's blessing to the earth realm. When we have the anointing, we must do all that we can to protect it. My assignment this morning is to remind some of you that God is going to increase your anointing. And then God is going to bless your anointing. And God is going to take you to a new dimension and to a new level. But you got to know how to protect the anointing. Somebody say amen. You got to know how to protect it when you get to the top. You didn't get there by yourself. The Lord is on your side. Somebody say, I'm anointed to survive at the top. Oh, say it with me. Come on now. Say, I am anointed to survive and thrive. At the top, the Lord is on my side. I've got the goods. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got the goods. The Lord is on my side. I know you're going through problems. I know the devil's fighting you. I know that your children may be acting up. I know that you may be going through some difficulties. 
But that doesn't mean that God is mad at you. It simply means the devil is fighting you because he sees the anointing on your life. And he knows that power on your life is going to mess up his kingdom. They used to sing the old song, Satan, I'm going to tear your kingdom what? down. When you release that anointing over families that are hurting, their marriage is going to get better. Their children are going to straighten up. And that's why we sing the songs. Stir up the gift. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Single lady, don't spend so much time on your hair and your makeup. Spend time on making sure you are anointed. And if you are anointed, you will draw. The anointing is a magnet. You will draw. You will draw men to your life. Let me just stay here for one minute. I remember years ago when I was in college, I was in a little church. And there was a lady in the, in the church singing in the choir. And then couldn't meet nobody. She got up in the choir and started singing. And God anointed her. And God blessed her. And when she sing, I mean, you could feel it. You could feel the chills go down your spine. You could feel somebody punch you in the gut. She was anointed. And all of a sudden, no matter how she looked, somebody was asking her out. Somebody say amen. See, when the anointing hits your life, he'll make you look good. Somebody say amen. She wasn't a little skinny girl either. But then one day she walked down the aisle. All of her. See, you are working on your hair. Work on the anointing. You are working on how you look. Work on the anointing. You are working on other things that don't matter. It's the anointing that matters the most. Raise your hand with me and say, I am anointed by the Holy Ghost. Stretch it up again. Say, I am anointed by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus. That's why we sing the song, Stir Up the Gift. That's why we sing the song, Anointing. Fall on me. We understand we can't make it without God's power. We understand we can't make it without God's anointing. You, you got to understand you can't make it in that business without God's supernatural help. He will connect you with the right people. He will bring money to you. He will connect you with the right bank. I'm talking to somebody out there on live stream. I'm talking to somebody here. He will help you. Somebody say, hell. When the anointing is on your life, you don't have to push and you don't have to shove. He'll bring you to the front. Somebody say, amen. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Somebody say, I'm anointed. And what couples don't do is they don't know how to protect the anointing upon their lives. When God brings a man or a woman together, then he pronounces an anointing upon them. But they have to learn how to protect that anointing. If they start fussing, cussing, and fighting, then the anointing will quietly lift off their marriage. <clears throat> and the spirit of the division will come in. You got to know that you are anointed. Your marriage is anointed. That's why you get together and have kids. And God blesses your children. Beyond your wildest imagination. Why? Because of the anointing. I got to give you four ways. I got to hurry. I got to give you four ways on how to protect the anointing upon your life. I give you four ways on how to protect. I remember when I was in college, years ago, when we used to go out, I used to go out to Oral Roberts to check out the girls. And I used to go out to check out my wife. There were kids there that were anointed. Sing you happy. There were guys there that could preach. Am I right, honey? And right down the street was Rainbow Bible Training Center. There were guys that were, that they were wreck a church. Anointed. But they didn't know how to protect the anointing that was upon their lives. Today, many of them are not even in ministry. You got to know how to protect what God gives you. You can't go everywhere your homies go. You can't drink everything they drink. You can't be smoking everything they smoke. You can't be chasing everything they chase. Somebody say, I am anointed. Acts 10.38 say how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God is with you. Somebody say, the Lord is with me. That's why the devil is fighting you. The devil used Saul to fight David for years. For years he fought him. For years he fought David. But David just humbled himself. Because if there's one thing that in the Bible David understood, David understood the anointing. That's why he lasted. That's why when the demons saw Jesus, they said, Thou son of David. David understood the anointing. We're going to be preaching about it down the road. Somebody say amen. Number one, how do we protect the anointing of your life? Write it down. Somebody put it on the screen. Stay away from idol worship. Number one, how do we protect the anointing on our lives? Stay away from idol worship. Stay away from disobeying God. Going to the psychic and the palm reader. Checking out your zodiac sign. That's idol worship. Watching Freddy the Chainsaw Massacre. Them scary, I like scary movies. It's idol worship. It's all about demonic. Stay away from it. It messes up your, it messes up your anointing. Somebody say amen. How many of you ever watched a scary movie and then you just felt scary and bad and felt eerie in your spirit afterwards? Stay away from it. If you're going to have the anointing in your life, stay away from certain things that are idol worship. Idol worship stops the spirit of winning in your life. Idol worship stops the spirit of, spirit, the spirit of winning in your life. Stay away from idol worship. The children of Israel, when Achan stole the accursed things that were in the idol worship, they lost their battles. Because they dealt with the accursed things. They dealt with idol worship. Stay away from it. Somebody said, stay away from it. Exodus 20 and 3 said, thou shalt have no other gods. You want God to bless your anointing. You want God to increase your anointing. You want God to bless you. Stay away from idol worship. Exodus 34 and 14 says, for thou shalt worship no other gods. For the Lord, whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. He told them, I don't want you. When you get into the land, don't worship at their temples. When you get into the land, don't worship their idols. Stay away from them. Don't worship Baal. Stay away from him. Evil behavior, idol worship, evil TV shows, idol worship, demonic activity, when you know there is demonic activity, stay away from it. Stay away from idol worship. In your family, you got people that are worshiping other gods. You got people that are Jehovah Witness. You got people that are Muslim. You got people that are living worshiping the sex god. You got people that are, that are just doing their own thing. Smile and wave. Stay away from it. You got people that are coming out of the pandemic, they throwing a big party. Having Hennessy and, and gin and Jimmy Bean and, you know, uh, the marijuana cookies. Stay, don't go to that party. I got to tell you, as your pastor, I got to tell you, don't go to that party. That's idol worship. It's going to mess up your anointing. It's going to mess up the power of God upon your life. Somebody say amen. Don't practice and live for the moment. Uh, honor the anointing on your life. Somebody say, I am anointed. Raise your hand with me. Help me. I say, I am anointed by God. Don't mess with idol worship. Stay away from it. I don't have HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, HBO Hellbound only, Cinemax, seeing all the way to the max, Showtime, show everything all the time. I can't sit there, Pastor Kyle, and watch that. It'll mess up my anointing. 
It'll mess up my mind. It'll mess up my spirit. It'll mess up my soul. Somebody say amen. See, you got to know what idol worship is. Somebody say, stay away. We must consecrate our lives and ask the Lord to anoint us. God is trying to take us somewhere. God, I'm not talking to everybody. God is trying to take you somewhere. And you cannot be playing around with idol worship. It'll mess up the anointing that God has upon your life. It'll mess it up. Your anointing is within what God wants to do in your life. He want to bless you. You got to know how to protect it. Somebody say, protect your anointing. Somebody say, protect your anointing. Somebody say, protect your anointing. The children of Israel lost battles because Achan stole the accursed things, and it messed up the anointing. See, when some people do wrong, it'll mess up the whole assembly. Somebody say amen. You got to know you are important, minister. You are important, usher. You are important, greeter, because your smile radiates your anointing. Somebody say amen. Number two, how do we protect the anointing on our lives? Stay in your calling and purpose. Woo. Number two, how do we protect the anointing on your life? Stay in your calling and purpose. Korah in the Bible was Moses' cousin. But Korah got jealous of Moses. And he said, you think too much of yourself. Who do you think you are? We don't want to follow you. Sometime in ministry, you got to watch your family. Oh, I ain't got no help in here on that one. Somebody, sometime, Korah was his first cousin. And he said, who do you think? Mo Miriam and Aaron was Moses' cousin. And they said, Moses, who do you think you are bringing this Ethiopian woman up in here with their racist spirit? You got to watch people that are close to you. And you got to put a demand on the anointing that we are going to get the job done. Stay in your calling. Your anointing is within your calling. I could not go down to the Pepsi Center or the new center, there. what do they call it? The ball arena and make it sound as good as Pastor Kyle. That's not my calling. That's his calling. Somebody say amen. So you got to stay in your calling. The reason why God don't take people to the top, they get out of their calling. God called you to be in the soprano section. And you want to be up front leading when you don't have the unction, the function, you don't have the anointing to carry a song. Oh, I ain't got no help in here today. You got to know your calling. Somebody say, I am. Anointed. Your divine assignment from God brings you supernatural help. Somebody say, help. Just focus on your job. And then the Bible says, just focus on your job. In Acts chapter number 19 and verse 15, these men got out of their calling. They went out and start to try and cast out devils. And the devil said, hey, who, who are you? The evil spirit said, Jesus we know. Paul we know. But who are you? You are out of your calling, boy, and I'm going to teach you a lesson. If we made a movie of this incident right here, where the demons beat the man up and took his clothes off, it would have to be X-rated. You got to stay in your calling. Somebody said, stay in your calling. Stay in your calling. Just do your job. Somebody said, just do your job. Just do your job. See, if you're supposed to be in the alto, just get in the alto and sing. If you're supposed to be a tenor, just get in your tenor section and sing. Don't be saying, man, I missed it. I missed it. Minister Jordan, I, I got this brand new song when you can't carry the song. See, you got to have the anointing to carry the house. 
Let me help somebody. You got to have the anointing to carry that business. You got to have the anointing to carry that institution. You got to have the anointing to carry that department. You got to have the anointing to carry that job. Somebody say, I am anointed. I can tell you because I wouldn't be here if God hadn't anointed me. Somebody say amen. I'm not here by accident. I'm here because God has anointed me to preach to you. I'm here because I'm anointed to pray for you. And if you get in this church and stay in this church and stay under the anointing of a pastor, I am a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. I am a pastor. I'm called to one house, and it's this house. Somebody say amen. There in Dallas with the promise keepers, I got, I got invited to go and preach. And I just said in my mind, I'm not leaving my church to go preach at your church. Because my, my, my blessings, my anointing, and my gifts are tied to this house. Oh, you better know your blessings are tied to the house. Somebody say, I am anointed. Stay in your calling. If you're called to be an usher, put your head up, put a smile on your face, and just usher people to their seat. And every step you take, God is moving you to your next level because every step you take, you are coming into your new anointing. It's a new season. It's a new anointing. Flow in your way. Know when God changes your season. David was anointed three times. And each time God changed his calling and his assignment, took him to the next level. His first anointing, he just went out into the field. He got anointed in front of his brothers, and the Bible said he went back to taking care of the sheep. Out there by himself, singing to the Lord, taking care of the sheep. His second anointing to Hebron, he got anointed a second time. And he became king. It was a king anointing, king over Hebron. And the third anointing that he got. Saul took a bow, took a, took a cruise of oil and anointed his head. And that was the dominion anointing. That was the anointing to kill Goliath. That was the anointing to destroy. That was the anointing that when those men got with David, they were broke, busted, disgusted, and had nothing. But when they got under the anointing, I'm talking to somebody. When they got under the anointing of David, the Bible said, the wretched men became the mighty men of valor because of the anointing. I'm here to tell somebody, you got to respect the anointing. You got to protect the anointing. You got to understand the anointing because God is trying to take you somewhere. Somebody say, I am anointed in Jesus. And stay in your calling. Somebody say, stay in your calling. Uzziah, King Uzziah. King Uzziah was anointed to be a king. And God helped him. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Read the whole chapter to get this whole story. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. He was anointed to be a king at five years old. The Bible says, long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. He built, went into the desert and dug wells. The Philistine came to help him. The Amorites came to help him. And the Bible said, but when he became strong, he forgot that God called him to be a king. And he left his calling. See, you got to know what you're called to be. You got to know what you're called to be. Some of you are called to be great businesses, business people. Some of you are anointed to be great men and women in the kingdom of God. Some of you are anointed to sing in the choir. And when you, the, moment, the moment you step foot in the choir, it goes to a whole nother level. Some of you are anointed to be a soul winner. King Uzziah was anointed a king. And the Bible says he went into the temple and told the priest, Azariah, y'all don't know what you're doing up in here, up in here. <laughs> he got an incense to burn. And he said, I'm going to show y'all how to run the house of the Lord. Everybody ain't anointed to be a pastor. Everybody ain't anointed to preach the gospel. Everybody ain't anointed. And then he got, out, got in there with the priest. And God had blessed that boy. The Bible said God helped him. 
Three times in that chapter it said God helped him. God helped him. God helped him against the Philistines. God helped him against the Amorites. God helped him because he was anointed to be a king. But he left his assignment. Went in there and started messing with the priests. Y'all don't know how to run no, no temple. Somebody say amen. So you got to know your assignment. And he got in there, and God looked down and said, boy, you in my house. Now, I done blessed you as a king, but you're not going to come up in here messing with my priest. So the Bible says the Lord slapped him upside the head with, with leprosy. See, being out of his assignment and his calling and his purpose cost him his life. The Bible says that he died a leper for the rest of his life. And because his, he, the anointing was upon him, his son became the king in his stead. See, the anointing is upon your family. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the anointing is upon your family. Oh, I, I know you're extroverted and you don't want to mess with nobody, but I'm talking about you. You need to move this morning. Turn around to somebody and say, neighbor, the anointing is upon your family. Somebody say, I am anointed. That anointing, being out of his calling, caused him to lose his legacy and his life. If you don't know where God's called you, just get in church, pray, be patient, listen to the word, and he will direct your life. Don't just jump up and start doing something. Know where you are called. It is a serious thing. And I have to tell you, it's serious. When God anoints your life, he's not just playing games with you. He's trying to get you to the next level. He's got a realm he wants you to run. He's got a dimension he wants you to control. Somebody say, I am anointed. I got to hurry. Number three, how do, we, how do we protect the anointing, pastor? Meditate on the word. How do we protect the anointing on our lives? Meditate on the word. Sing a lady, stop worrying about Ray Ray didn't call you. Get your Bible out and meditate. In Psalm 92 and 10, he didn't call you back. He didn't text you back. I am anointed with fresh oil. Just keep saying it. I'm anointed with fresh oil. The Lord is on my side. Don't be picking up the phone. Where you at? Why you ain't calling me back? Let him go. He doesn't have the capacity to be with you. I'm trying to help somebody. He doesn't have the anointing on his life to be with you. He can't go where you are going. Somebody say amen. See, when I met my wife, I knew I had to have some anointing. She came from generation of preachers. And I, I said, I, I got to have some anointing up here, Lord. You got to help me. She didn't even want to talk to me. Evan, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want no relationship. But I know my assignment. When you are knowing it, you can see things. When you are knowing it, you can perceive things. When you are knowing it, you know things. See, I know she was my wife. And almost 40 years later, we are still here because of the anointing. Somebody say, I am. Come on, open your mouth. Say, I am. Anointed. Number three, meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. Get the word in your life. And the Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, sitting in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do he meditate when? Day and night. Get in the word. Lady, get in the word. Get in the word. Then it says in verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit when? In his season. You got to know your calling. You got to know your season. His leaf also shall not what? Things are not going to die in your life. You leave your job when you want to leave. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't get fired and kicked out and be ushered out by security. 
I've never had that happen to me. Every job God gave me, I left on my own terms. Why? Because I knew God gave it to me, and I knew I was anointed to do my job. So I never got fired. God, there's an anointing of productivity. Go back on the, on the video and watch my sermon on the anointing of productivity on your job. It's going to help you. But the word of God says that he'll bring it forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. So you got to know the anointing will bless your money. You don't have to beg nobody. That's why you got to clean up your credit. Because when the anointing of finances and prosperity hit your life, you're going to have money. And nothing is worse than a Christian that God has blessed that's got bad credit. Nothing is worse than a Christian that God has anointed that don't know how to manage their money. Nothing is worse than a Christian that God has pronounced his choicest blessing over their lives. And they don't know how to manage their money. Somebody say, I am blessed. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. In the beginning was the word. So when you read the Bible, you are drawing Jesus close into your life. You honor his word, he'll honor you and the anointing upon your life. How do, how do we protect the anointing, Pastor? Number one, have no other gods. Have no other gods. Somebody say, no other gods. No. Number two, stay in your calling and your purpose until God promotes you and anoints you for the next level. Number three, you got to meditate. Somebody say, meditate upon the word. It will stir up your anointing and it will bless your life. And then number four, I close. But number four, how do we protect the anointing? Protect somebody else's anointing. Oh, you didn't hear that. Let me say it again. I'm going to unpack it in just a minute. How do you protect your anointing? You protect somebody else's anointing. Somebody say amen. You ain't got to expose them. God will do it. Some people say, I got I to get that pastor straight. Somebody say amen. I got to get that deacon straight. I got to get that, that choir member straight. No, you don't. You take care of your anointing. Leave other people alone and protect their anointing. What do you think about Sister Sally? I have nothing to say about Sister Sally. People ask me all the time, what do you think about other pastors? I ain't got nothing to say about them. I got nothing to say. Let me read you 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 7. So David, who understood the anointing and the power of God, David and his armor bearer, Abishai, came to the people by night, running from Saul. Saul had them on. He had their butts on the run. He did, y'all. I got to tell you the truth. And Saul was laying sleeping in a trench, and his spear was stuck in the ground by his bolster, right by his side. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Those are Saul men. Then said Abishai to David, David, we got him, we got him, we got him, we got him. God had, he said, God has delivered your enemy into our hands this day. Therefore, let me strike him. Let me get that. Let me get him. Let me strike him. I pray thee, the spear, even in the earth, I'll just hit him one time. Somebody say one time. Somebody say one time. When people in the church do you wrong, it's not your job to get them back. God will get them back. If I told you all the stuff that I had to go through to get to where I am today, you wouldn't believe it. If I told you all the hell I had to get, to, to get through with, with people in the church, you wouldn't believe it. I told you people, if I told you about the people on my job that tried to stab me in the back and get me fired, you wouldn't believe it. But when God raised me up and I got the hammer, I didn't get them back. I got away from them. See, you got to know, you're going to get them back or get away from them. Somebody say, get away from them. And God will get them back. Let the Lord, his arms are longer than yours. His hammer is bigger than yours. The Lord will get him back. Let's get back into the Bible. He said, let me hit him. I only, I only hit him one time. I know right where to hit him. I hit him right through his heart. See, this guy was an expert. Abishai would shoot born owls with the right hand and the left hand. He was bad. 
That's why he was one of David's number one men. He said, let me hit him. I only hit him one time. Somebody say one time. With a spear. And I'll smite him. And I'll not have to hit him a second time. Verse 8. Say, I don't need a second hit. Somebody say, man, he was bad. Somebody say, he a bad. David turned to Abishai and said, hey, boy, destroy him not. Calm yourself down. Chill out. Who can stretch forth their hand against the Lord's anointing and be guiltless? You want to protect your anointing, learn how to protect somebody else's anointing. Ain't got no help in here. You want to protect your anointing to the next level, learn how to protect somebody else's anointing. David said to Abishai, as the Lord liveth, Abishai boy, the Lord's going to smite him. God's going to get him. Or his days shall come to die. Or he shall descend in the battle and he'll perish in war. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. I ain't going to touch him. He said, now get your spear, get your stuff. Now, that is in your bolster. And get your cruise of oil and let's get out of here. A few times later, Saul fell on his own sword in battle. But here's the tragedy of his death. See, when you are anointed, you affect innocent people. When you are anointed, you affect the innocent. Jonathan, Saul's son, was innocent. But Jonathan died in battle. A horrible death. He was David's covenant brother. Somebody say amen. You got to understand the anointing going forward. Coming out of this pandemic, God's not going to let the church get away with the foolishness. Oh, I got no help in here. Get in church and stay in church. Stop playing games with God. He's not playing around. David knew that the Lord would deal with Saul, and he did. When you are anointed, God will take care of you. Let them talk about you. Let them say what they want to say about you. The Lord will take care of them. Leave them alone. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are anointed. Leave them alone. Just pray for them. Plead the blood over them. Ask God for his help. God is the only one that's going to deal with his anointing. Somebody say amen. And I want to encourage you today as we go forward. A lot of you listening to me on live stream. A lot of you here in this audience. I could call you out. You are anointed. I have watched your life. You are anointed. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. You are no, I love golf. I love golf. But I'm very selective about who I play golf with. Somebody say amen. I got some people that I, I, I would like to play golf with that, that are anointed. Man, they just get up there and swing light and the ball just, I'm saying, Lord, can I hit that far? Look at David and say, Ava. You got to know who to hang around with. You can't hang around with everybody. You can't go everywhere everybody else is going. You can't go to every party that everybody else go to. You got to know there's an anointing on your life. God's blessings is on your life. You have favor. Somebody say favor. You have God's blessing upon your life. Somebody say, I am anointed. It starts with you. It's not what they say. It's what you say. It's not what they do. It's what you do. Don't curse your future trying to get somebody back. Get away from me. Somebody say amen. Or you just get away from them like David did in that cave on that night. He said, boy, get your stuff. Let's go. Because something good is going to happen to you. I close. Your life follows your words. There's an anointing on your life. We may not be the biggest church in town. We may not have the biggest budget in town. We may not have the biggest people in town. But I can declare the Lord is with us. We are still here. 
We don't owe nobody nothing. The Lord is our help. Somebody say, I am blessed. See, I understand the anointing. I have nothing to say about the preacher down the road. I have nothing to say about the preacher on the other side of town. I have nothing to say about the preacher in, in Dallas or in Memphis or wherever they are. Because I understand if I protect their anointing, I protect my anointing. But see, some people, they just got to open their mouth. Girl, you know he did this, that, and the other. I wouldn't go to his church. And all of a sudden now, failure has shown up in your life. You done lost your job. Your money has gotten funny. Your marriage is on the rock. You disrespecting the anointing. And God says, touch not my anointing and do my profit no harm. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. See, you're going somewhere. The Lord asked the Lord, Lord, why you want me preaching on the anointing? He said, I'm trying to take them somewhere, and they're going to need the power. They're going to need the anointing. They're going to need the unction. They're not going to make it. The devil going to come and fight them, and they got to have the anointing to destroy the yoke. Not break the yoke, but destroy the yoke. Somebody say, I am anointed. I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody say, I am Anointed, this is a day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Don't get mad at nobody. Just release the anointing upon your life. Somebody say, I'm anointed. And that's why the devil fight our kids. He fight our kids relentlessly because he sees the anointing on their lives. He fight our kids, get them to disobey Get him to be disrespectful. Get him to not to follow the things of God. Because he sees the anointing on their life. And you have to help them to stay in line. Because you don't understand. You are at the back of the bus. I'm the bus driver. I see every curve. I see every hill. I see every pothole. And I see the railroad tracks where we got to stop. And you, you, they are in the back just doing stuff. That's why you got to turn around and tell your kids, sit down. I'm coming up on a railroad track. Somebody say amen. A real anointed parent knows, how, knows their kids. Somebody say, I am blessed. When you anointed, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. They are formed. But my Bible says... It will not prosper. Is there anybody in the house today that know God has anointed you? Is there anybody in the house today that know there's a power on your life? Is there anybody in the house today that know there's anointing upon your life? Somebody say, I am anointed. You got to declare. You got to declare, I will. Stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Stir up the anointing by giving God the praise. Stir up the anointing by worshiping the Lord. Stir up the anointing by blessing the Lord. Stir up the anointing. It's the oil of gladness. Put on the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness, there's a demonic force that want to make you sad. They want to make you depressed. They want to make you discouraged. But my assignment is to remind somebody that you are anointed for the season. You are anointed for this hour. You are anointed to drive the business forward. You are anointed to move that company, to move that job, to move that department. There's an anointing upon your life. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side. You would have never made it. Somebody say, I am anointed for this hour. Stand up on your feet. There's an anointing upon your life. Raise your hands with me, everybody. Say, Lord, I receive a new anointing for this hour. Say it with me. Say, Lord, I receive. A new anointing for this hour. In the name of Jesus, 
thank you, Lord, for all your help in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. If you're going through a major battle in your life, would you just come? I only got room for about 10 people. If you're going through a major battle, I want to pray and ask the Lord to release the anointing over your life. Come on. If you're going through a major battle, you're going through a major battle, come on and stand with me. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Receive the word. You're going through a major battle. Just come and stand with me. Come and stand with me. I know what it's like to fight demonic forces. I know what it's like to fight evil forces that come against you. You got to release the anointing. I've had to fight some battles. You got to release the anointing and you got to stir it up. That's why I love that song and we're going to sing it, Jordan, when we close. Stir it up. Stir it up. I know what it's like to not know what's going to happen tomorrow. But when you pray and you say, Lord, I release your anointing over this situation. Then he said, the yoke shall be destroyed. Not broken. The yoke shall be destroyed. You got a situation in your life? Just start releasing the anointing. I release the anointing over it. There's an anointing on your life. I release the anointing over that job. I release the anointing over my family. I release the anointing over that situation. I release the anointing over that business. I release the anointing over that problem. I release the anointing over that court case. I release the anointing. Stretch your elbow all over the house. Reach up as an agreement. Everybody say me. Say, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and say, Lord. We release your anointing over every situation in our lives. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord. We release the anointing over every problem. Say it one more time. Say, Lord. We release the anointing over every situation in our lives. Thank you for the blood. Somebody say the blood. Thank you for the blood. The blood of Jesus over this situation, over this problem. Father, they stand at your altar. You said my ears would be open. My eyes would be attentive to the prayers that are made in this place. Hear our prayer today, O oh Lord. These are your anointed ones that are fighting demonic forces. Give them favor. Somebody say favor. Open your mouth and say favor. Give them favor. We release the anointing over that situation. Raise your hands with me and say, Lord, I release the anointing, the power of God. The same power that raised up Jesus from the dead. I release it over this situation. I am blessed. Say it again. I am empowered. Say it again. I am anointed in the name of Jesus. Stretch your elbow all the way up and say, Lord, I release your anointing, your power over this situation. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Say it again, stir it up. Tell your spirit, stir it up. Stir it up. It will destroy the yoke that the enemy have around your neck. Throw your head back to the look up to the Lord. The yoke is destroyed. The yoke is off your neck. The devil's foot is off your neck. Somebody say, I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Will you just give the Lord a hand clap for those that have come to the Lord. We release the anointing over your situation. We release the anointing over that problem. Somebody say, I receive that. Say it again, I receive that. Now give the Lord a hand clap. For its goodness as you go back to your seat. Thank you for all your help. We release the anointing of the Holy Ghost over your life. Let the power 
and let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. All the way up and up. Everybody say, Lord, I receive it. Come on, put your elbow all the way up. Say, Lord, I receive it. Come on, put them up all the way up. So everybody say, I, I receive it. Hallelujah. I receive the anointing for success. I receive the anointing for prosperity. I receive the anointing for victory. I receive the anointing for faith. All that you are in my life. I receive the anointing. Somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It's the anointing that makes the difference, church. Don't try to do it by yourself. God's going to go with you through every battle. God's going to go with you through every problem. God's going to bring you out of poverty. God's going to bring you out of failure. God's going to bring you out of that demonic fight that you're in. Release the anointing every day. Father, I release your anointing. I release your power over this situation every day. And that's how you're going to get out. Somebody say, I am anointed for this hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, amen. See, you may think that you are nobody, but you are special. Somebody say, amen. You are the people that God brought through the pandemic. Somebody say, amen. Your mom and them didn't go through no pandemic. The church doors are not closed during that lifetime, but you survived at home watching on the screen, and you're still here. You, somebody say, I'm special. I pastored in the midst of a pandemic. Don't tell me. I don't know how to pastor. Oh, Roberts didn't have to pastor. He just set up a big tent, and the people flooded in. Billy Graham didn't pastor through a pandemic. He just went to a stadium and opened the gates, and people flooded in. But I pastored through the midst of a pandemic when nobody was in the pews. And I still had to preach my heart out. Somebody say amen. amen. And God brought us through. Oh, he's bringing us through. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Oh, say it again. I am anointed. Oh, you better know who you are. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You better know who you sit next to. You better know who you sit next to. You better know who you sit next to who you sit next to. For those of you that have loved ones that don't know the Lord, let me encourage you to keep praying for them. For those of you that have loved ones that are not saved, don't give up on them. Release the anointing over their lives. Release God's power over their lives. And God will start to work in their lives. His power will start to work. His power. From the first moment that Moses went before Pharaoh, God's power was at work. But it took ten more plagues, nine more plagues, before God released the people. See, when, when, it, when it doesn't happen overnight, that doesn't mean that God is not at work. You got to keep praying for your loved ones. You got to keep speaking faith over them. And then you got to keep releasing God's power. You got to keep releasing God's anointing. Somebody say amen. Don't worry about what other people say. It's not what they say. It's what you say. Don't let your saying cancel your praying. 
you got to declare, my loved one's going to be saved. My daughter's going to be saved. My son's going to be saved. My grandkids going to serve the Lord. It's not what they say. It's what you say. Because you and your lips of clay are anointed by God's hand. Somebody say amen. So you got to declare they're going to be saved. You got to declare the Lord is going to bless them. Somebody say amen. You got to declare the Lord is going to save them. If you've not received Jesus Christ and you're watching me by live stream, would you just raise your hands right where you are? If you just want to rededicate because there's a new anointing coming your way. Put your elbow all the way up. You just want to rededicate because you're going somewhere. If you've not received Jesus Christ as Lord, I offer him to you today. As a 17-year-old boy in a little church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I gave my heart to Jesus. It was the single greatest decision that I ever made. A little boy in a little church, as big as this aisle right here, I came and gave my heart to the Lord. And it was the single greatest decision that I ever made. My life unfolded from that decision. Blessings came my way from that decision. My education came that way from that decision. My family and you as a church goes back to that day when I said, Lord, when they asked me, when the old mothers in the white gloves came down and said, call Jesus, I called Jesus. And they said, baby, what you want to do for the Lord? I said, I want a pastor. They laid hands on me and said, Lord, anoint him to be a pastor. I'm here today. The single greatest decision that ever happened in my life came from a little church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, five miles from the beach. So, so for those of you that are questioning whether God loves you, he loves you. For those of you that are struggling in your mind, God loves you. For those of you that, that don't know what to do with your life, keep walking with the Lord. Stay in church. He'll direct your life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not what? Perish but have what? Everlasting life. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither there is salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given unto men whereby they must be saved but the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Would you stand this morning with me as we pray for our lost loved ones? Would you just stand. God's going to save them. Oh, I know they're running and doing their own thing, but you just keep on praying. Release the anointing over their lives. Release God's favor and God's power over their lives. And ask the Lord to save them. Somebody say, save them. Come on, say it again. Save them. Lord, draw them closer to you. Save their souls. May they spend eternity with you. Write their names in the Lamb's book of life. Rebuke the devourer. That's trying to hold them captive in a life of destruction, a life of sin. Rebuke the devourer who has a yoke around their neck. Rebuke the devourer. We release the anointing of salvation over our loved ones. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, come on, open your mouth and say, Lord, we declare salvation has come to our house. In the name of Jesus, Stephen, Lillian, Wilma, Diamond, Duran, save them. Somebody say save them. Zoe, Zayden, Dash, Melissa, Marcus. Somebody say save them. Maddox, Matt, Isaiah, Gabby. Greg, Sonia, China, Kente, Adam, Joseph, Jonathan. Somebody say, I save him. Oh, come on, say, save him. Maverick, Maya, Joe, Chris Cola, save him. Casey, somebody say, save him. David. Save them.
save them, Lord. Raise your hands with me all over the house. Everybody say with me. Say, Lord, save our loved ones. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, save our loved ones. We declare your blessing over their lives. Thank you, Lord. They will spend eternity with you. You will save them. Save them, Lord. We dedicate them to you. Save them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all your blessings in our lives. Raise your hand with me one more time. And everybody say, Lord, hold their hands by your power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I rededicate them. I give them back to you. Save them. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you. You may be seated. God is a good God. Amen. God loves you. And he's going to bless your life. And I just want to say to you that are here, thank you for coming out today. For those of you that are live stream, thank you for being online. For those of you that are on Zoom, God bless you. There's an anointing on your life. That's why the devil fighting you. That's why the devil's trying to mess you up. That's why the devil's trying to get you off track. He don't want you to reach your destiny, your purpose, your plan. And he doesn't want you to leave a legacy for Almighty God. But I'm here to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody say amen. For those of you that give to the Lord, I just want to say thank you. I want to ask my wife if she'll come. We just want to take a minute and just say thank you. Thank you because you were the one, your gift, encouraged my faith in the midst of the pandemic. When there was nobody in the house but a couple musicians, it was your faithfulness your text that says hello ECC online your text that says I'm just checking in it was your text online you know when you got on when we got on live stream that was the faith that drove us forward somebody say amen so today I want to pause and just say thank you every gift you've ever given everything you've ever done to serve the Lord here at Emmanuel Christian Center we want to say thank you because God is good. Amen. God is so awesome. You know, it's a divine partnership. We always read this to you because it is what we stand on. It is what you signed and you said, I'm in agreement with what God says. It's not what we say, but what God says. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house to do the work of the Lord, to yes. do the missions of God, to do the things that God has called us to do. Prove me now herewith. I will, this is the promise. This is the promise. You yes, should have this hanging in your house. I will open you the windows, windows of, heaven, of heaven, pour you out a, a blessing, blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer Devour for your sakes. For your sake. The enemy shall not destroy the fruit of your ground so he can't mess up your stuff. Your vine shall not cast her fruit before time in the field. All nations, all people, all neighbors shall call you blessed. You shall be a delightsome lamb. What a divine partnership. Wow. I just want to say thank you. Jesus said in, Matthew, in Mark 4, 26, the kingdom of God is as if a man should cast seed into the ground and sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow. He knoweth not how. I don't know how the Lord's going to bless your life. But I know that he's going to bless you because he loves you. Somebody say amen. Amen. So as you give today, just know, let's just come forward. Give everybody an envelope. Everybody give something. God is going to bless you. And he's going to help you. And he's going to strengthen you. He's going to give it back. Thank you for walking through the pandemic. God's going to bless you. Amen. No matter who you are, and no matter what side of the track you are, what color you are, God loves you. Amen. Somebody say, God loves me. Say it again, God loves me. Say it again, God loves me. God loves you. And as you give, make your checks payable to an ECC. And just know, put God first, and he will bless your life. You struggle long enough. It's time for the battle to end. Sow a seed that the Lord would end the battle. 
You've struggled long enough waiting. Just sow a seed. And God will bless you. Sow a seed. Harvest only responds to seed. Harvest doesn't respond to tears. Harvest doesn't respond to cries. Harvest doesn't respond to your problems. Harvest doesn't respond to your wants. Harvest, sweetheart, only respond to what? Seed. Harvest only responds to seed. Make sure you got seed in the ground. Make sure you got seed in the ground. I'm not some preacher trying to get your money. Somebody say amen. I just want you to be blessed. I'm anointed to be your pastor. I'm anointed to help you. Somebody say amen. I'm anointed to speak God's word. We are anointed to speak God's word over your life. If I wasn't anointed, my wife would have left me a long time ago. Can I just tell y'all the truth? Because I'm hard to live with. Am I right, honey? She ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to take you to lunch, baby. I got you. But it's the anointing. Over your money, over your blessings, over your business, over your corporation, over all that God has blessed. It's the anointing. We give you all the glory. God's going to bless your life. Make a check payable to an ECC. Five ways that you can give. You can give on text. You can give on the website. You can give by mailing it in. You can give by dropping it off at the church. Or you can give in service today. You say, I don't want to miss my moment with God he will bless your life somebody say amen let us all stand let us all stand together let us all stand I'll ask my wife if she'll lead us in a short prayer and then I'm going to pray so raise your gifts up to the Lord thank you Lord we give under the anointing of the Holy Ghost yes. Father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this time of giving you said, give, and it shall be, shall given, be given unto, unto you. you. Pressed down, shaken together, shaken together, and running over shall men heap into your bosom. So we receive the blessing of abundance. Yes. We receive the return. We receive that. We receive the harvest in the name of Jesus. We receive we that. pray, and we trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We lean not to our own understanding yes. in all of our ways. As we acknowledge you, you will direct our paths. So thank, thank you. you for blessing thank our you. gifts in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Raise your hand up and everybody say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. Come on, help me say it again. Say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. We stir up the anointing of prosperity over our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. If you're giving today, come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith. And we're going to stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up.
over the house. Everybody say, Mr. Lord, Lord, I stir up the anointing for my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Would you welcome Pastor Kyle Speller as he leads us in prayer. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And they shall put my name upon the children of Emmanuel. And I will bless them. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for teaching us to stir up the gift of God that's within each and every one of us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would take this message and that you would saturate it within our spirit, man, Lord God. That you would remind us, Lord God, of the anointing that's within each and every one of us, Lord God. Father, help us to not dis, not be ashamed of the anointing. Help us to not, not abuse the anointing or misuse the anointing of God in our lives. But help us to be obedient with the anointing of God in our lives. Help us to stay away from idol worship. Help us to stay in our calling and purpose. Help us to meditate on the word of God. And help us to protect others' anointing as well. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for sealing this word in our spirit. And Father, we honor you today. Take it and water it and make it flourish, Lord God. Now, Father, I pray the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us as we leave the sanctuary today. Guard us and keep us until we meet again. And we love you and we praise you and we always will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, family. Thank you.